Do you guys see the game of the year, I guess, in the SEC this week? No, I saw the game of the year in the ACC where I watched Trevor Lawrence throw five touchdowns in the first half. Yeah, well, I mean, they, they, they're Georgia Tech and much. You know, when they go play Notre Dame, that's going to be their maybe their toughest game. But I, I, they're pretty much going to get a, a ride to the national championship. Mm-hmm. I, I, you know, they're, they're very good, Clemson. But uh, you expect them to, to beat Georgia Tech 73-7. to I mean, Lawrence is putting up incredible numbers. And he's, he's showing why he's a Heisman Trophy candidate. And, like, it doesn't matter that they're in the ACC. That, that fact, to me, is a little overrated now because Clemson's just beating teams so badly. Yeah. So they've kind of overcome that. But down here, the game, obviously, everybody was talking about Georgia and Alabama. And a lot of people were picking Georgia, thinking that their defense was going to finally be the one to stop Alabama. And a lot of people didn't like the fact that Alabama led so many yards up against Ole Miss. And, uh, you know, what Alabama does what they do. They're just impossible to stop over the course of a game. They have so many weapons, and they tire you out. By the time the fourth quarter came around, they were running the ball on Georgia at will, which is really hard to do. And if you look at it right now, they have, you know, Mac Jones, Najee Harris, Devonta Smith, and Jalen Wilde. All of those guys are Heisman candidates. Mm -hmm. They're all putting up great numbers for Alabama. I remember a couple of years ago, everyone was hyping up this receiving core for Alabama, and I was saying, Devontae Smith, watch out for him. As he's, being, he's great. As being one of the more well-rounded ones, too. I mean, yeah. people are thinking he's just like this speed he's demon got, yeah. deep threat, but he does a lot more than that, too, and he's he shown does. that for, for much of the season now, now that he's gotten more opportunity. No Judy, no rugs to steal those targets, too, and he's played very mm-hmm. well so far. And I think NFL-wise, when he enters his draft, I think he'll be better than Ruggs. Yeah, it, it surprised me that he he stayed in and Ruggs went out. I always thought that Ruggs wasn't as good as him, mm-hmm. but they're both very fast. But look, what Smith does excellently is he gets his feet in and bounds all the time. And he doesn't get one foot in, he gets two feet in. So he's already making that adjustment in, in college. And you know, Georgia is good. I mean, you know, There are teams in the SEC that are good. I think Texas A&M, I don't think they're going to lose again. I think Florida is good. I think I think George is very good, but you have uh, Alabama and you have everybody else in that conference. Yeah, Florida's now going to have to win the SEC title game now that they lost to uh, to Texas, to Texas A&M, A&M. which they w- probably they- would have had to anyway. But now it, now it's definitely a must for them having one loss to have any shot. Because well, remember, the Big Ten hasn't started yet, so they could have one, maybe two undefeated teams too. I know. Now, are they going to be involved in a playoff system? How is that going to work? I mean, they should be if they have a team that dominant. I, that that could hold them against it. But also, you got to remember the conference schedules. If the whole conference is, or most of the conference is strong, I don't think they can hold it against it in comparison to a conference that's top heavy. So, especially being with the Big Twelve being terrible this year, and right. we, we'll, we'll have to see with the Pac twelve. They're also playing less games. I think there can be if Ohio State is as dominant as they should, or maybe mm-hmm. Penn State is, is a good team. They could definitely get in. And again, with SEC having a lot of losses, they're not, they're not going to have two undefeated teams anymore. Well, no, but I, I think you could still get – I think Texas A&M or Florida could still be that second team. Or Georgia. Yeah. It, do, it all depends. I mean, if they don't lose again, you know, then they, they should – a one-loss team from the SEC along with Alabama should go. But um, if – look, if Big Ten plays like five games, how are you going to put them in the college football playoff? That, that, that to me would be tremendously unfair. Well, it, again, they would really have to have their teams dominate in order to have a chance – it, because obviously, if you, if the Big Ten is like the Big Twelve this year or the Pac Twelve, where it's all spread out, yeah, you're not going to have that, and then that's where the small sample size will get you. I'm saying if you have an ultra dominant team like Ohio State can be, because their roster is really good. Yeah, right. They, they'll, they're, they're they'll good get every in. Year. They'll get in just be, for the sole purpose of the other conferences really haven't been amazing so far, especially the no. Big Twelve. No, no, uh, yeah, they haven't, and you're good. You're not going to get more than you know, maybe you can get Notre. Maybe you can make a somewhat argument for Notre Dame, but they're going to have to play Clemson tight. Um, otherwise, they won't get in. And then you, but you still got to. I still think you can easily have two SEC teams. Uh, just because Florida lost and Texas A&M lost already, you know, it's a lot it's in who they play. And if if the East goes as it, you know, as I see see it going. Um, you have a bunch of teams now. South Carolina beat Tennessee this week. Tennessee was supposed to be no, they beat Auburn. 
they were, they were supposed to be, the, you know, this is the year they get, you know, they have all these great recruits. By the way, recruit. I called Tennessee losing. Yeah, he did. And they, they got their ass beat. No. And so um, they, they, they totally had their shot at Georgia. They failed, and they went right back to their, their little hole. And uh, basically, you have to step up if you want to be a big boy in the SEC. Tennessee can never do it. South Carolina really can never do it. Um, and in the West, you know, you thought Ole Miss when they put up big numbers against um, Alabama, and then they go and lose to Arkansas. So nothing's really making sense. Mississippi State, too. They score 44 points right. a week. Yeah, and they now two against Kentucky. 30, it, 30 the last, next three weeks. <laughs> right. It's, it makes no sense. You know, the only thing that you know is going to make sense is Alabama every week. So, but that, you know, that's it. But, uh, hey, in, in, the Dodgers finally showed some grit. Huh, Errol? I mean, after all these years where they underachieve and they should have won at least one World Series, and, you know, Kershaw underachieves, and they always seem to have the best team, but they never win the World Series. Mm-hmm. And the Braves really took it to them the first four games of this series. And, I mean, they beat them bad. And that series turned when Ozuna got called for leaving third base early. Otherwise, it's 3 nothing in game five, mm-hmm. and the momentum totally is on the Braves' side. But when that play got called back, it made, kept it at 2 nothing. And Seager hits a home run, make it 2-1, two, two, and then Will Smith hits a home run later Corey Seager was the player of the yeah. series. He was unbelievable. Yep. He is a free agent at the end of the season. There will be a lot of teams lining up for a shortstop. He will no yep. longer be a Dodger after this season. One yep. of those teams that will really appear to look for a shortstop is the New York Mets. Corey Seager is, uh, Seager is one of those guys that you could absolutely look at. He's still very fairly young. He's 28, 29. Still a young uh, a shortstop. He's a good He's defensive a player. and. It, it, uh, whatever, however old he is. Yeah, mid-20s, I think. Yeah. He, yeah, he's still young. He, he's still young. He still has a great bat. If he could stay healthy, uh, this guy could be a top shortstop still in the league. He's, he's a sensational player. And I think the Dodgers will beat Tampa in seven games. It's going to be it's gonna be a pretty good series because Tampa really was playing awesome, and then they tripped up a little bit. But Houston really surprised me. And I know oh, Houston took man. a lot of crap. I, I really know they and they deserve every inch of. They didn't. Do, they they didn't belong there. They should have been suspended for the whole year. Sixty yeah, games. I, you know, I've had other people tell me that. I, yeah, it's funny because my my fiance asked, says that too. Mm. She's like, she's like, the Astros should have been suspended for the year. Why did I did do that? And I'm like, well, you can't suspend a whole team for a year. Um, you, you just can't spend a whole organization. You would have to have players come in and, and replace them. But it's really unfair to do to a team. You could have punished them more. Why well, there was no crowds. They, they, they there they and got Mark, off easy. Mark, Mark it, 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 there was no crowds this year. It would have been perfect. Yeah. They could have I mean, they could have suspended you know the whole season maybe, for them. Maybe they could have done it this year. If it, you know, in this environment, probably is the only thing that it could have could have happened that way. But they, I, I felt they got off easy. They did, but they still played really well. If you look at the offensive statistics for the postseason, a lot of them are Astros, and whatever things they did to give them the advantage, they still hit pretty well when they didn't have that. So they, in, in a way, maybe they think they redeemed themselves, but they got a huge break this year because if they played a normal year, a lot of those guys would have been going down every day in April, and they would have had pitchers coming after them every game, and they weren't allowed to do that. If so they that played, if, happen next year. If they played the Yankees in that series, it wouldn't have, it wouldn't have went to seven games. It wouldn't have. If the Yankees were up 3-0, they would have eliminated them after, probably after, they would have won one game and then lost at game five. I I, I just, I, I think Tampa, they don't have enough power in the middle of the lineup, and that's why I think the Dodgers yeah. are going to be the better team in in this series. I, I, I really do. Tampa didn't have any hitting at all. Yeah. I mean, uh, uh, what, Arizenica or whatever his name is, Arizona. the guy came out of nowhere. Yeah. He's, he's the only one who's hit. I mean, yeah. you look at their, their batting averages, they're all batting like 110. Yeah. So, it's amazing they've gotten through this far. I mean, they got good pitching and they have great defense, and they never really seem to beat themselves. But there's absolutely no offense. I'm watching this team play. I'm thinking, how were they? Why were they winning? How are they scoring runs? But they managed to, to do just enough to win. Well, the Yankees did and the then, same thing they did: is they couldn't hit in the big parts of the game, and that's why the Yankees didn't win that series. That, that's mm-hmm. that's strictly what happened. Garrett Cole pitched his ass out uh, in game yeah, number five. Yeah, he pitched well. He pitched very he did well. What he was supposed to do. Yep, yeah, but. Yeah, all in all, they couldn't hit. Done. They couldn't hit. They never they could hit. hit. They couldn't hit, and the bullpen let them down. Yep. So, um, but you know what? I mean, it, this was a weird year anyway. So I don't know how much it's going to matter in the end. But Mark, did I tell you that we're our new 
our new design of our website will be up at the end of the week. You're going to really, cool. really like it. Your stories are going to be center of attention on our app. You're going to, I mean, on our, uh, on our website. You're going to really love it. I, I know cool. you're going to really, really love it. Awesome. Um, so with the NFL, um, we'll, we'll finish off with that, I guess. Uh, the surprises to me so far, or you look at the NFC East, how bad it is. The Eagles have been awful. You know, the Cowboys were going to be awful, I guess, after that gets hurt. But you still think Andy, Andy Dalton's good enough. I think uh, so. You'll see how they do tonight. Uh, and the AFC East, the, the Patriots aren't, I'm sorry, they're not the same. Mm-mm. They're not the same. Either is Tampa. Absolutely not. Either is Tampa. Well, Tampa beat, they, they beat an undefeated Green Bay team. They beat, beat an undefeated Green Bay Packer team because of their defense, not because of their offense. Let's be honest. Maybe in 38-10. I mean, yeah, 30, I, go, go look at the, first of all, I, I, know, their defense. I, I, I know they had some defensive scores. I know. It was I their know. defense that won. It wasn't Tom Brady, that's for sure. But Mark, also oh, Brady's, keep, not play, Brady's not playing bad. He's not playing good. Mark, also keep well, in mind, though, too, that was the question marks of the he's team. Throwing, he's throwing, I think he's thrown five or six interceptions and four pick sixes. Uh, Tom Brady had 160 yards thrown yesterday. That wasn't he, good. He, that's not Tom Brady-esque. He didn't, yeah, but Brady, that, that's a normal game for when the defense gives him what he does. 160 but, uh, yards I, I, for Tom I think Brady? If you're comparing, though, I think if you're comparing both the Patriots and you know, the Patriots against Brady, Brady has the advantage right now. I don't think so. How can you say that? The Patriots are 2-3. and three. So they what? Lost to the, to the, to the, Bron- the Broncos. No, I, I, again, Green Bay is going to have a bad game. They just got Green Bay in a bad game. They had Aaron Rodgers in a bad game. They play Aaron Rodgers in the playoffs. There's no way Tampa's beating them. There's no way. And Mark, also keep in mind, too, the, the running game and the defense were some of the question marks Tampa had at the beginning of the season. So to see them play as well as they did against that quality of an opponent is, a, is well a big step for them. Yes. They play very well they, defensively. They have all season. Their, right? offense, their offense looks garbage I, I, I don't think their offense looks good. I mean, they've, they've, they've put up points against, uh, against the Chargers. Mm-hmm. They've, they've lost to the Bears. Me and you could put up right? points against the Chargers. They look but terrible, their defense. But they're, then they're doing what they're supposed to do. My, my point is they're not underachieving. They're doing enough to win. And and you're probably one of the guys that think that they're going to the Super Bowl, which you're out of your mind. No, I, I wouldn't say they're going to the Super they're Bowl. They're not even going to come say, close. I, I didn't expect them to go to the Super Bowl. I'm comparing them to the Patriots right now because I wanted to see how, either, how both of them do away from each other. That's always had my interest because I really want to know. Was it Belichick Tampa, or Tampa? Tampa has more talent. Tampa's got more talent than the Patriots. Uh, let's be let's 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 call bygones be bygones. If you if you look at, if you look at where where the Patriots are and look at Tampa, look at the talent that Tampa has, and look at and try to compare it to the Patriots. The, the Patriots had seven guys sit out for the season because of COVID nineteen. So mm. I, you can't compare or contrast the teams this year. You really can't. These, but these were not top ranked guys. These were not you know Gronkowski's that were sitting out for the year. So, and their defense was still supposed to be good. Cam Newton was supposed to. Cam Newton should be should be playing better, but he's not. You can't lose to you can't lose to the Broncos. I hear you. Had you had a bad finger. He played with a bad finger. Read read about it. I, I, you can make excuses all day long, I'm but I, I just I just think that I expected more from the Patriots with Belichick because I do think Belichick's a very good coach, and I I do want to see how he does for a full season. Now it's only five games, so he could still come back and they could still win the AFC. AFC East. They're not winning but, the AFC East. The, but the Dolphins right now are playing the best in that division. If you know, if obviously the Bills probably going to lose tonight, and then they'll be back to four and two, and then the Dolphins were three and three, and they manhandled the Niners and beat the Rams last night. And I mean, well, I mean, I guess beating the Jets really doesn't count. But <laughs> you're, be- you're beating a Pee Wee football team. Yeah, you are. But they they really laid it to the 49ers, and the 49ers surprised me last night by beating the Rams. <laughs>